Welcome. 20 years. What a ride. But you know what's been around there for a little bit less than 20 years? Anybody, I guess? Bots. And they suck, right? With exception of Ibex, our friendly chat support bot. But then again, he's dealing with you guys, so it's just a matter of time until he follows the footsteps of Skynet. But welcome to Team Security presentation. I'm CCP Stinger, and let me introduce the team. We have CCP Grimmy, our security analyst, our anti-credit card fraud, anti-RMT, internal affairs, and has been with CCP since 2003. We have CCP Hugen on our team, senior game master, watchful hack, um, <coughs> excuse me, watchful hawk who restores the hacked accounts, who is tackling the problem of hacked accounts, is anti-RMT, and deals with the most complicated cases of account sharing and has been with CCP since 2005. Then we have me, CCP Stinger, I'm security analyst. I take care of the bots. I also handle anti-RMT, and I've been with CCP since 2012. And you can see already that all the three members of the team security, we have something in common. It's anti-RMT. Because credit card fraud, hacked accounts, and botting is all connected by real money trade. And our speakers for today is CCP Grimmy. He's going to continue a little, bit, a little bit later after me and me. So let's see the menu for today. What do we have? We have the team introduction. We have the botting recap of last year. Anybody been last year here at FanFest? Yeah. Did you guys see the presentation last year? Uh, yeah. OK, great. Then we have top secret, middle secret, bottom secret. And let's see how much time we have left for Q&A. But let's start with a recap. Last year I told you, I showed you some information on what we're dealing with, right? This year we're gonna show you how we're dealing with it. But to recap, we were speaking about organized bot farms, you know? Those bot farms that are there just for one purpose and one purpose only is to bot, to generate currency that is being then sold on auction sites via RMT. They're easy to spot, tough to remove. Multiple accounts are created with just one click. The accounts are running 24 seven in batches and they use virtual machines. Like they use a one hardware machine with huge amount of RAM and then spin up smaller virtual machines with Windows and EVE Online client to such an extent that they even have a snapshot image saved. So to create a new virtual machine takes them minutes, right? They are fast and efficient, and the battle never stops. It's like a game of whack -a We remove one batch, another one takes over. We remove another one, takes over. Take a look at that smile. That's how I look like when I'm banning the bots. So we had to take a step back, take a look at the situation, and change our tactics. Because the organized bot farms, right? They are there just for one purpose, to generate the currency, to be sold. That is a business model. They don't have a normal gameplay behavior like our players have. You know, you start, you start with venture, then you play, you play, you play. We all know how hard it is to get the next ship and the next ship and the next ship. They don't do that. They just get something injected, assets or currency from somebody, and they immediately start bot botting minimizing the time spent and maximizing the profits. So we had to change our tactics and go after the financers. Like burn all the bridges because it didn't work just to remove the batch. We had to go after the financers who are injecting. And this is how it looks like. This data, what you see, is an actual farm, bot farm, that started operating around Christmas. And this is a real data. This is not made up by us. This was approved by our legal team, so we can show it with the character names, because they don't interact with normal players. They interact just with self, and it's for us safe to show. And you can see here is 150 accounts from a total of 117 of this bot operation, right? So 317 accounts, how many characters can an account hold? 
up to three. So that immediately spikes up to 1,000, 1,000 characters. And new players still say that our logs show nothing. I mean, in the beginning of EVE, it's been 20 years, our logs show nothing. This has changed and has changed a lot. The logs show something. Actually, they show a lot. Imagine somebody would be following you throughout the day, right, and record every interaction you have. So you wake up at 7 in the morning, right? You put your socks on, you put your pants on, you go to the toilet, and you jettison a container into space. And that continues throughout the day. Now the question is, what is interesting for our investigation? Are those the socks? Are those the pants? Or is it that jettisoned space container that you did? So we need help. And let me introduce you our superhero, Maltego. Maltego is open source intelligence software. Doesn't mean that the software itself is open source, but the intelligence, there are 96 different information hubs available in Maltego where you can pull and mine different data. Starting from a simple network mapping to a complicated investigation into social media presence of a person of interest. And Maltego is mostly used by um, antivirus manufacturers for the threat analysis. It's used by Interpol for cybercrime investigations. And it's used by us. And in this particular example, like a simple example of what Maltego can do is a network lookup, network mapping. Right, so we put in ifonline.com and we run different transforms. Transforms, when we run transforms, we're pulling the information, the different information that is available for us. A simple thing is to take a look the DNS records, where they are stored. When you type in ifonline.com, where are you actually going, you know, first, and then continue the network path. Of course, with ifonline.com, you have associated the support ifonline.com. That's where you file your reimbursement requests that are being denied constantly. Then you have the forums ifonline.com, where you are trolling your position in the game. Then you have the secure ifonline.com. Hopefully, that's where you're buying Omega and Plex, right? You're not going anywhere on auction sites. Yeah, I see you. I see you. And then, of course, you have like communityevenlight.com and so on and so on. So this is just a simple example of what Maltego can do. But I was speaking about open source intelligence, right? And this is not how we're using it, because we are having one huge advantage. Together with our PX tools team, with our programmers, we took Maltego and we banned it to our own needs and purposes to investigate the botting, credit card fraud, and RMT, and hacking. Just a second, I lost my <laughs> train of thought. Because we have a huge advantage. All the data is out there. It's on our servers. We don't need to look for open source intelligence. We have it. And this is how I'm going to show you today this investigation of the bot farms early this year, where we transform from this logs, and just a spoiler alert, in this logs there is a character already found from 1,000 characters, potentially 1,000 characters, has already been found who is distributing the assets. So try to first find the character. That is a lot of, a lot of man hours. And I'm going to take you where we're going to take a look. You guys know what this is? What is it? Russian bot farm. <laughs> no, not Russian bot farm. It's the Matryoshka dolls, right? And we're going to take a look. We're going to peel the layers away from that organized bot farm to try and find our financers, to try and find that injection of currency or assets or items. So in the end, we have this nice looking graph in Maltigo because Maltigo is able to pull the data, to display it on a graph, and to display the relationships between the entities. Like when we put something on the graph, it's an entity. So let's start 
by peeling the first layer, right? So we know the characters who are doing the botting. Uh, sorry, not the characters, the accounts that are doing the botting, yeah? But they are not the ones who are interacting in the game. Accounts cannot interact in the game, it's the characters. So our first thing would be is to take the first layer off and take a look what's inside, the characters. And this is what is happening in this particular recording. Um, just on a side note, the recordings that I have are from Multigo 4.2. The version is outdated. Nowadays, there's 4.5, which even brings more capabilities of the software itself. And here, I place the users that, are, that we know that are botting and place them on the graph and I have a simple available transforms to me. That's how I pull the information. First the one would be like, you know, to actually not work with the IDs, but work with the usernames. So the simple transform is like, okay, tell me the username of the account. And then that's what you get. Uh, you get the username, the account, you get the alpha or omega state, and then you get a little red bookmark. You see on, on, on the slides, the red bookmark indicates that the accounts have been banned. Of course they've been banned, they've been operating since January. We will not allow them to operate until September. <laughs> so we ban them. Another set of transforms, it's where we're gonna peel our first layer, is to take a look at the characters. Character names, their wallets, their skill points, right? And very important, there's a user link between the account and character. So let's get back. So we got our characters, right? What would be the next step for us? Corporation, again? Corpor good, that's actually good. But in this particular case, corporation, as you maybe saw a few slides back, excuse me, I'll go back. They are all in NPC corporations. So in for example, so the next step would be is actually to peel another layer, but for that we need to do a middle step. The middle step would be is actually to grab all the characters and try to pull all the information that we have. And that's what you get. So this is the result of that transform and you see immediately that something is off on the graph. The characters are bookmarked purple. Now in this particular case, our PX tools have made it, if the character is deleted, it's bookmarked purple. Now why would somebody delete a character? I mean you guys have been deleting characters here and there because you didn't like the name, you didn't like the race, and so on and so on. But this is a bot farm, you know? It's designed to do one thing and one thing only. So that means somebody, a person, went in there and actually deleted it. Why? Because he was coming with his character for a week, and right now the character is marked as a scammer, and I have a new, have a new account. In this particular case, this is immediately jumps into our eyes that we need to investigate. Deleted character? It's odd in this particular investigation. Are they trying to hide something? Are they trying to destroy the evidence? We'll need to find out. But the next step would be is actually to find all the interactions in terms of assets movement. So we need to peel another layer to go a little bit deeper. For that, I'm gonna grab all the characters that came from the users, our known bots, and I'm gonna bookmark them blue. It's just for me to know that those characters are known to us. They're known to us, so later on the graph and an investigation, we can see clear results. A little bit for us to easier spot something. And now, unfortunately, when we're gonna be peeling another layer, there is more transforms available for us. We can look at different information, but I'm not gonna show you what is available to us right now because it's a constant battle that we're fighting. We still want to have one ace up our sleeves. But you already know that we're looking here in this particular investigation, when we're peeling another layer, is all the interaction regarding assets movement, in particular items and currency, not the jettison container. 
yet, but we could. And you can see I selected everything, I'm running the transforms, and now would be the time for me, while it's completing, to go grab a cup of coffee. No, of course I'm gonna skip the waiting and I'm gonna show you the result. And this is what happens when we're peeling another layer. This transform showed all the interactions, all the assets movement between the characters. And you can immediately spot in this particular layer of investigation how one character is distributing left, right, and center into the bot farm. But there's something interesting happening there, right? So you see the one character, and then suddenly more characters appeared, and they don't have a bookmark. Remember, we bookmarked our characters because they are known, and these ones are not. So Maltego pulled them out of the logs there because they, exactly, you got it, because they came up, because they injected assets or currency. And those are the guys that we need to investigate. They are the financers. They interacted with the bot farm in terms of assets movement. And I will ha we'll need to skip because now we're doing the same thing that we did with the first layer, is actually to take a look who are they, get all the information, get all their usernames, uh, their accounts, and so on and so on. And it continues three, four layers a little bit further until we arrive at our destination in this particular investigation and we find out that those guys who got the assets and the items, they were credit card fraudsters. They exposed another set of accounts that were focusing just on credit card fraud, where Grimmy was taking care of them. But some assets were invested into the bot farm. And this is it. This is our small presentation of the investigation where we take Maltigo and its capability to mine data, display data with relationships, and this is how we transform from reading logs, following maybe dead, dead end leads, instead we're doing nice looking graphs, and Maltigo just helps us a lot in this particular case. How we are using it, it's very unique, even unique to the, the team itself of Maltigo, this is our huge advantage because we have all the data. And Maltigo helps us to reduce man hours spent on an investigation and keep my sanity <laughs> in place. Big investigations that were taking days now take hours. Trivial tasks that were taking hours for us to complete now take minutes. And because of that, because of the time that we have, we can also help our other departments in CCP. For example, Alliance Tournament that just finished our prestigious eSport event. Back then, every character that signed up for the Alliance Tournament had to be checked manually and the aliases too, because we don't want bad guys participating and winning those prestigious ships. So now, this year, Team Security was helping with that. We punched all the information, we run our transforms, Maltigo even supports machines, where we just simply set different types of transforms, and it was like, punch the information in, run the transforms, and then really just take a look at those guys that have something on them, that are suspicious, that were misbehaving, and then, you know, instead of finding them, we have them, and now we can spend time to make the decision if we allow them to participate or not. We did a small thing together with the Maltigo team. We pub published a case study. It's available on maltigo.com under block, under resources block, case study, and white papers. It's a small summary, but we're, we're gonna be also looking to do something bigger in the <coughs> coming months. But that is it from me. I hope you enjoyed the small presentation of our small investigation, and I'm giving the stage to my colleague, CCP Grimmie.
thank you, Stinger, for this uh, under the hood view of uh, bot hunting. I will be doing a little more traditional things for a syntax like this. Some numbers, some graphs, always enjoyable. Uh, we'll go through the numbers of uh, accounts we ban for RMT-related activities. And first on the list is account hacking, which is a quite an annoying and a nasty problem. Obviously, people lose their skill points, their assets, even characters are destroyed and deleted. You know, it's just complete devastation and it uh, takes a long time to fix and it's a very, very, uh, all of it obviously sold to other players in the game. So something that we dislike quite a lot. Next on the list is the bots. So this is mainly Maltico results and um, clearly ruining the gameplay for everyone, doing, doing their automated tasks. Uh, financed by fraud, account hackers, it's all basically the same groups of people. Then there's payment fraud. This is a very nasty problem as well. Uh, obviously a real world crime. Not a lot of good things to say about these people. Uh, this uh, incurs all kinds of operating costs. Uh, we have to f uh, refund, there's charge bucks, there's all kinds of fees and various problems. Obviously a negative effect on the in-game market and prices and availability of offers. We had to restrict offers or even remove offers due to abuse. Uh, ISK selling, this is the end station of it all. Uh, generally, all these accounts previously could be classed as ISK selling, but these are actual accounts that are sort of uh, getting assets from hacked accounts and then selling onwards. Uh, mostly it's organized networks of, of um, non-players, but there are also some players in there that are trying to make a buck on the side. Everyone gets the same end result. We permanently ban everything we find connected to them. So we don't want to be doing that. Also, we see uh, accounts that have obviously been sold and end up being used for any of these uh, previously men mentioned activities and we will go and find all your accounts, all their accounts, not necessarily you guys, but all other accounts that we find and close them as well. So this is all about the uh, ISK and the Plex and the skill injectors that you people are buying on the market. And uh, this is uh, various websites across the world getting all this from stolen accounts, from credit card fraud. So it's easy to lower your prices if it's not your things that you're actually selling. So that's uh, easy to give that discount, but there's a price because we have always, since all these 20 years, we've always removed whatever assets we find that people have been buying from these people. And this is a, a long history by now, 20 years. And if we you buy something at, the, at a discount and we find you and take your stuff, then there are some bad things that can happen. We will go and find, uh, use, a lot of people use throwaway alts for this, but you know we find connections through Maltigo, through all kinds of things, and in the end we find the main characters where we will take the value of whatever they're getting. And this means in many cases, unfortunately, that people are put into a negative wallet so that's never good because you can have problems with using the market, you can have problems with creating contracts, all kinds of problems. And obviously all accounts connected will be flagged for scrutiny and if there's other, you know, if you catch you again or them again, they will get in the end permanently banned as well. So we will, uh, it's a long history, we didn't go back 20 years, but five years, we had a look of uh, confiscated stuff. So we take, let you take a minute to let this sink in. This is 
So some big numbers. So the, this is ISK that we've removed, Plex that we've removed, and uh, we also have removed sk large skill injects. So these are not the only items that are sold. People are selling all kinds of ships, um, tags, whatever there's like, but these are the most commonly traded RMT goods. And you know, we are talking trillions and trillions and trillions what are we, 133, 133 and a half trillion ISK in the last five years. On top of all this, we have, <coughs> we have uh, titans and all kinds of ships and all kinds of assets and characters on these accounts. So this is just a part of it. And um, it continues and we still do this and we'll c continue doing this. Uh, just for, uh, for the sake of looking at it, we're kind of hypothesizing. We did, did, earlier this year, we did a, a little uh, scientific calculation on the prices involved, actual real world monies. So, you know, this is, uh, this is the assets. Obviously these prices go up and down on, on these RMT websites. And you know they're quite lower at the moment than we went with, but this is a like a rule of thumb kind of average price. But these are still some you know still some some um, impressive amounts. And um, I will now read the statement that we have prepared. <coughs> uh, we want to use this opportunity to dispel any vicious rumors uh, that this is Team Security Retirement Fund, or even, <laughs> or even <coughs> that such a, such a fund exists at all. <coughs> we, of course, emphatically deny these ridiculous allegations and will most certainly not be spending it on lavish trip to the Bahamas or Vegas. <coughs> We'd also like to make it absolutely clear here that our villas on Lake Grand, uh, Lake Garda are nowhere near as large and preposterously luxurious, luxurious as some people have erroneously, even maliciously claimed. <laughs> now that, I think we have time. Oh, I must have left the Rolex in the Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we have time for some questions yeah. from the audience. <laughs> So we have uh, um, just a little bit uh, limited, <laughs> limited time for a few questions. So make them count. Do you take action against every website which is like this? You need to have a contact of point for RMT. So do you take actions against the website which is running in data centers by mailing abuse, getting to the police? Because actually, it's it's fraud in every country. We have okay, done that. Okay, so yes. um, I will relay the question because we're recording. Mm -hmm. The question is, are we taking any actions uh, on uh, the auction sites that are running? Uh, because every site needs to have a legal contact person. Uh, and if we're taking actions towards that, yes, we are. But um, it's not always as simple. Some countries do take down the stuff. Some countries just, we don't care. Sure. You know? And again, there's multiple, it's the same scenario as whacking the bots, you take them down, they will appear somewhere else. It's not only just the problem of EVE Online and CCP, there's multiple games who have this issue going on. Yes? Uh, most of the accounts that get banned are obviously IP banned or hardware ID banned, but they'll generally always get a way around it. I know that's an, always an ongoing process, but are you always actively trying to stop the new way of certain so the question is, um, the question is like, well, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> so, 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 so when you ban, when you ban groups of yes, RMTs, yes, that will always come with an IP ban or a hardware ID ban. Okay, so um, uh, when we ban the bots, what other actions are we taking against them to make sure they're not gonna come back into the game? Unfortunately, we will not disclose this information. Uh, because, um, again, as maybe you saw from um, 
the presentation virtual machines. They're trying, but failing. And, I will, and we will not comment into further because we need to keep some information to ourselves because it's an ongoing operation and battle. And we do know that obviously they will be changing their patterns, so the fact that they're changing the pattern is also suspicious. Yeah. So we look at that. You know, we're, but mostly we VPNs are used and we cannot ban the VPNs uh, because they are actually used by some actual players, not bot farms. Yes, please. Uh, are you doing actions against the bots that aren't geared at generating wealth or RMT like uh, Intel bots? Oh, so are we doing something against the Intel bots who are not actually generating currency? That is the question and the answer, we are. But they are tough bots to spot. And I already know what you're referring to because that situation happened two weeks ago on Reddit. And uh, they were known to us. I investi investigated them personally because they were reported via ticket in the beginning of August. And when looking into our systems, I see a picture. And in this particular case, it was for us inconclusive. So I left a note for further reference if this becomes a real issue and we will need to, you know, dig super deep. And then the situation was happening on Reddit by whistleblowers. And suddenly, with the information that they provided us, that was the missing puzzle piece, the whole picture became clear. And in that case, it became clear, a clear violation of our rules, of our EULA and TOS, and we were able to take action. Which brings me back again to you guys. If you see something, create a support ticket. It, our GMs will pass it on to us, and we will investigate the situation, and we will take actions where we can. You can also use bot reports, but the problem with bot reports, they are being abused. Because everybody who is in JITA, right? Oh, that spammer, he is a bot, report him as a bot. So a lot of players are reporting false positives, and the data is just watered all around the place. Or even in a huge fleet fight, flight with a huge tie-dye. Let's just simply report the enemy fleet, right? <laughs> Come on, guys. If you see something, please create a support ticket. We take a look at every ticket. We do our investigations. If there is something, we will take action. You will get a thank you email for bot reporting. If there is nothing, next. Is there any plans, well, I guess two parts. Is there any truth to the fact that certain groups in the game encourage botting of their members? And if that's found, if that's true, is there any plans to take on uh, punishment to perhaps the leadership of those groups? So uh, we're following up on the situation that happened. Uh, if it's found, for example, in Alliance, that some members of the Alliance are botting, uh, are we taking any further actions against the leadership of the Alliance or the corporation and so on and so on? And the answer to that uh, is yes. We do follow the ISK. We do follow and see who is benefiting, benefiting from that. What is actually happening with that ISK and the assets? Are they being sold? on the uh, auction sites? Are, be, are they being in, injected into something else? Are they being injected into capitals? And so on and so on. That's why also Grimmie was speaking that ships, we do try to confiscate as much as possible, but we have a line that we try not to cross. We try to keep the game integrity in place, but we're not trying to make uh, players into, oh, no, you can deposit it into the retirement fund. But we're trying not to punish players who seem to have benefited from that but didn't know. So we are not punishing everyone in the terms uh, like, okay, that alliance is bad, let's ban the whole alliance. No, we try to take action as far and as much as possible to the parties who were involved and who did benefit from it. Well, so the question is like, are we making changes to the UI, to the user interface to make it harder? No, unfortunately uh, that would uh, involve other teams in CCP. Has been discussed many times. But definitely. it has been discussed. 
And interesting enough, when there is a UI change in the client, we see that the bots uh, are not operating, but it takes them three or four weeks and they're up again and running. So we cannot do <laughs> UI change every month, unfortunately. It's a game design. Uh, we operate on our own, and we're not in sync with the, what is happening with game design and developers who are actually bringing new features. Sometimes we benefit from it, sometimes uh, we don't, but uh, we continue with our operations uh, as they are. We have, yes, we have uh, visited all the games for all kinds of information with customer support related issues, with all kinds of these types of issues as well. So, yes, we have. We, we have try that. to knowledge share and yeah. get other knowledge. Absolutely. What's your opinion on uh, so called CCTV bots, like live streaming of particular systems in the game? Is that an in a uh, user breach or not? It's not a bot. Well, uh, it's. Uh, the question is, what is our opinion regarding the CCTV bots? And uh, the answer to that is, it's technically not a bot. Because a bot needs to do something on its own. Uh, when we take a look at our EULA and TOS, there is a clear statement about third party uh, uh, software use, right? So if you have an account logged in 24 seven, right? and you're streaming it to Twitch or YouTube or whatever, you're not violating anything, technically. Uh, but again, the situation that happened uh, two weeks ago, we are, after FanFest, we're gonna sit down together with other departments and actually discuss uh, the situation because it's, no, it's been known for us uh, back then with the, what was the tool called? I already forgot, Beacon. If you, if you guys like been around for a little bit longer, there was a situation with a software called Beacon that was gathering Intel, and we addressed that situation where it was reading the memory from the client, right? So this particular case, again, our players, they are always one step ahead, like if we cannot do this, we're gonna do that. And we'll need to sit down and analyze the situation and come up, come up with new rules and policies to enforce that. Wait. Sure. You mentioned about you do some sort of uh, investigation or, or suit against the auction house. Are you doing the same about the bot software? Like to yes. So contact? we had one person, uh, uh, you know him, CCV Alpha. He was actually uh, doing it. He was collecting uh, the information from different bots, uh, run, uh, run website, uh, websites that offer bots and also the auction houses, and cease, cease and desist orders were sent out, and yeah, they're still online. So um, at some point, when you're trying to pursue that particular path, you'll hit a dead end. Mm -hmm. So we're trying, it's not always working. Macros, uh, so how do we stand about uh, using macros? Like our macros are bad. Like if you say macro itself, it's bad. You need to be more specific. What exactly are you trying to do? Input broadcasting, where you press one button and 20 clients do the same thing, is bad. Automated bot is bad. What else is bad? Are you guys gonna ask us again about isboxer? Is Boxer for window management good? Is Boxer for automation, input broadcasting bad? It's been constantly ongoing, ongoing, every fan fest. <laughs> sorry, sorry let, let, we need to continue just a second. There in the back.
So yeah, the question is like, are we gonna be like pursuing legal actions against the bot makers and uh, so on and so on, uh, people who are offering cheats and so on. So the situation in the gaming industry, uh, we, we are literally in, in the same boat as other companies. For example, Blizzard with Overwatch. That was news three, four months ago, you know, when they were pursuing legal actions against the cheat creator. Um, it all depends. Uh, we're trying to go that path, but when, it's, when it starts to actually involve legal teams, yeah, it's... Um, we would love to do it, but you know, we have a legal team that needs to be able to actually do it. And any clear opportunities probably would you know, be worth pursuing in this. But nothing so far. Okay, last question. Let's make it count here. That's serious, sorry. Can you repeat it again? Uh, do you have any means to measure your success? Like, you shut down a bunch of bots. Next month, you see less, but is it because they are less or because you are not catching them better? Like, do you, can you measure how successful you are and how you are improving? Depends. Sometimes, I mean, you're, there is a problem you go at the problem and you clean up the problem, but there's another problem. So there's always, a, you know, they're always coming back. They're always trying to find new ways to do it. So, uh, it, you know, f for individual situations, you do see the result when they try and go somewhere else, but they always try and go somewhere else. So, you know, I guess in in we're chasing our own tail a lot of the time. In terms of the organized bot farms that we were dealing last year, we actually drove them out of TQ they disappeared. Like the last quarter of last year, they were not running because we hit them so hard, we hit them so hard where it hurts, that they said, okay, we cannot run a sustainable business, because you need to understand what they're doing is a business. We cannot run a sustainable business and generate the currency. So they disappeared until Christmas. They came in, oh, we can operate again. Let's start up. And then we started hitting them again and again and again, and they disappeared after January. Like the, bot, the, the, the data that you saw, the 317 accounts, that was their attempt for three or four weeks. They disappeared, with exception that starting on the 17th of August this year, they came back. And they came back with reinforcements. And now we are working hard to drive them away again. So. In regards of metrics, we'll also take a look at the average price of 5 billion ISK on auction sites uh, because we're driving like hacking and uh, uh, CC fraud and botting, you know, it all ends up in RMT. And if the price for 5 billion ISK on the auction site is high, we're doing fine. <laughs> if it's low, there's something going on that we don't see and we need to dig into the data harder to see where is it coming from. So, so the player sentiment, you know, that's also a, an indication usually. I hope you actually guys see it nowadays in game that there's less bots around. And you need to understand that if you take our effort from the team, what you see in the, in, in, in the game, you can divide that effort by 10. So there's a lot of going around in the background what you guys don't see, but if you already see in the game, that means that huge effort was put into it and the situation is changing. But guys, that is it. We are out of time. Thank you very much. We wish you a pleasant fan fest. It's been 20 years and, and hopefully another 10 years and then another 10 years and another 10 years. Thank you guys.